Hi everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to generate toxic exceedance contours for specific concentrations of interest. The toxic levels that are available under the Effect Level folder of the Effects tab are only for specific ERPG concentrations. If you are interested in displaying exceedance contours for a specific concentration of interest, then please follow the instructions provided in this how-to video. In this example, I will be modeling a release of pure hydrogen sulfide. By default, for materials that are both toxic and flammable, the type of risk effects to model is set to toxic and flammable. To avoid modeling immediate ignition events, this should be set to toxic only. It is also possible to leave this to toxic and flammable, but you will need to ensure that the immediate and delayed ignition probabilities on the risk tab are set to zero. However, if you are modeling a mixture and you would like to determine the concentration of interest to use, then this formula needs to be applied. So for example, if we have a mixture of hydrogen sulfide and methane with 300 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide, then by plugging in the values and choosing the minimum between the 1 times 10 to the 6 parts per million and 600 parts per million, then we will be using the 600 parts per million. And within the pressure vessel window in the dispersion tab, then this 600 parts per million, if this is a mixture, this needs to be specified within the concentration of interest field. However, as we are only modeling the pure component of hydrogen sulfide, then in this example, I will be specifying the concentration of interest to 2 ppm and ensure that the averaging time for concentration of interest is set to toxic. And then click OK. The next thing I need to do is to make sure that the concentration for halting dispersion modeling is set to concentration and risk base instead of mixed basis, which is the default. And you can find this by going to the parameters tab and opening the dispersion parameters window, go to the far field. At the bottom, you will see the criterion for halting dispersion modeling dropdown. What this does is it ensures the dispersion stops when the concentration in the cloud drops below the concentration of interest. This method allows risk contours of the frequency with which the concentration at a location reaches or exceeds a given target value. However, it is worth noting that the results that will be presented do not depend on the duration of exposure, which means that there is no true dose calculated and no direct link to the level of fatality. The exceedance contours generated for these are valid for individual risk or the risk of exposure to the concentration, but not the risk of death. The societal risk results calculated using this approach should be treated with caution. I need to make sure that the criterion for halting dispersion model is set to concentration and risk base. And then click OK. As mentioned earlier, the effect levels cannot be used for this specific result. Therefore, I will need to use the vulnerabilities within the risk tab. And in this particular example, I will be using the outdoor vulnerability. However, you may also use the user-defined vulnerability within the building vulnerabilities or the indoor vulnerability. Now, I will open the outdoor vulnerability window. And in here, I need to make sure that the choice of toxic modeling is specified as used outdoor toxic parameters within the dropdown and not the used threshold concentration and probe it. As I am also only interested on the toxic effects, I will need to set the vulnerability from all the other consequences to zero, including from flash fire vulnerability, the overpressure lethality fraction, as well as from fireball, jet fire, and pool fire. I need to make sure that the toxic vulnerability fraction is set to one, and then click OK. Now my model is ready to run. I need to select all run rows within the workspace and ensure that risk is selected under the mode and then click run. Now that my results are ready, to view the exceedance frequency for the concentration of interest or the 2 ppm that we have specified for hydrogen sulfide, I will go to the ribbon bar, click the risk, and select multi-level within the individual risk graphs. A new window appears 
And in here, I will select the exceedance frequencies to display for a given run row and for the outdoor vulnerability, as shown here. And then click Finish. Now that the results are available, as you can see, for the two parts per million of hydrogen sulfide, it expands beyond the boundary of the facility. And you can do further analysis using this data. We hope that you find this how-to video useful. Thank you.